Hello and welcome to a very special How I Paint Things. Now today what I'm going to show you is one way that you can paint the speckled sickly skin that you see in Nurgle infected things and you can adapt this very easily to all sorts of gross bloated sickly skin types. Um, it's really grim but really very simple to do. So I figured following on from the Dark Tide fellow that I'd painted just the other day, it would be neat to carry on in a similar theme. So I've gone for a Nurgle infested uh, Ogryn looking dude here. This miniature comes from Station Forge. Um, I've printed him off of my Elegoo Mars 3 and I'll pop the link in the description to where you can grab that as well. So all of the paints will also be listed in the description and today I'm just going to show you how to paint the skin. Um, all of the other details I have already covered and I'll mention that later on too, but Let's get started. When it comes to painting this sort of sickly gross skin, I find it easier to start from a medium a primer of some description. So I've got here Zandri Dust, but you could use a gray or even a medium brown. I recommend against starting from either black or white because that's going to, it's going to quite significantly change up the tone of what we're doing. And we want it to be gross, <laughs> but without being super dark, or really very crisp, which is what a white undercoat might give us. So on my palette here, what I've got is roughly equal amounts, of maybe a little bit more Rakarth Flesh and Bugman's Glow. Some folks will suggest starting just from Rakarth Flesh. I like a slightly meatier <laughs> kind of base coat, for lack of a better term. Mix those together, and you'll see it starts going, ew, you know, that is not a pleasant that is not a pleasant skin tone. Now this is one of my little cheap brushes from the stationery aisle. And uh, we're just going to throw, oh god it's so gross. We're just going to throw this straight over the top of our primer. And when it comes to areas like these little uh, bits of his guts hanging out, throw some of this over there as well. You'll see this is quite pink going on. It will dry a little bit darker than it looks. Uh, but just work over the whole body. You'll see this covers very well, which is half of the reason why I'm using some Bugman's Globe in there, is that it actually helps the Rakarth flesh to settle. Now it's interesting that it, that's not really a terrible skin tone to start off with. If you were to slap some Reichlin flesh shade over the top of that, that's really not a bad base coat for all sorts of skin tones, but we're going to make this so much worse. So what I've got is some Deepkin flesh, and I'm going to get a fair dollop of this put it to the side and just roughly mix in until I get basically my first highlight color. Um, again, I'm not terribly worried if this isn't perfect and between different, you know, if you, if you don't replicate this recipe perfectly across the models in your army, it's going to give them a slightly more natural finish. And whether your base coat is actually dry or not, you can grab your highlight and we're going to just start roughly bapping it in the direction of oh, the highlights that we want to do. So leave that gray meatiness in the recesses. But what I'm going to do is just using the flat edge of my brush, get around and start highlighting some of the skin. So pretty much the same as if we were doing anything else at this stage. Now particularly around the edges of things, rather than trying to get a perfect straight edge to your highlights, just stipple a little bit and you can take advantage of a slightly rougher edge uh, where it will look more natural and as far as skin goes it's going to look a little bit more speckled and ugh, gross is the word. So take your time here and you can have a lot of fun with this actually, just bapping it on, I'm not being careful at all. Perfect is not what we want here. All right, so one more mix here of Deepkin Flesh. Let's just get some of this off my brush. And we're going to start applying this, now focusing on higher edges and lead increases in the skin. So again, still very similar to how we would if we were painting this, uh, let's say properly, but we want layers of grim here. This one can be a little bit tricky when you first encounter, you know, rounded edges that don't really have a sharp edge to highlight, but just think about where the light is going to catch and just stipple roughly. You see, I'm not fussed about perfect. I want that uh, slightly grainy edge to these patches. Oh, 
Yucky, yucky, yuck. Once that's had a little time to dry and settle, I think you'll see where I'm going with this. But we do want to add some more texture, particularly with these little buboes and pustules and ugh. Anyhow, painting nurgly stuff always grims me out, eh? So I've got here, this is a makeup brush with a little bit of Praxetti White. And we want to very lightly drag along extreme exposed edges, particularly paying attention to the, the pustules and what have you. But don't worry too much if you do pick up a little surface detail on his skin. Uh, as a matter of fact, that's probably going to help us quite a bit as a final sort of highlight. This is where he starts looking, you know, he starts going from looking like he was dredged out of the bottom of a lake to properly ill. So take your time here and as always with a dry brush, it is better to have too little paint on your brush and have to come back and add more than to have too much and ruin all of your base coats. Yep. That's gross. That's just what we want. What I've got on my palette here now, this is a little dollop of Plague Bearer Flesh. Now, you could use this neat if you wanted to, but it's going to give you a very green finish. I want a little bit more subtlety. So I'm going to add a couple of drops of water there, and we're going to use it more like a glaze. You could thin this down with the contrast medium, but I don't think you really need to. So once I've thinned that out, get some of it off my brush. We'll start... Uh, concentrating on areas which have these little pustules and buboes, uh, just add little bits of this at a time so you can see how it's going to affect that flesh. Now after a couple of passages, you'll see you want to leave some areas uh, between these infected spots clear. Uh, and we will come back once this layer has dried, and I'll show you putting on just a little more. So particularly in areas where it's going to collect you know, in the folds of his skin or in particularly dense patches of these gross little nodules, take a bit of time and just play with it, honestly. Uh, the other fun thing with this is painting gross skin is a very tactile experience. Once you've, <laughs> once you've put this on, just dab it with your finger and you're going to lift some of it off the top of the, the nodule so they stay white. Um, not strictly necessary, but a lot of fun, and yeah, it will help the look, I think. Once that's dried and settled, if you want to add a little bit more, if that's too subtle for you, just grab a little bit more on a smaller brush, and you can target areas that you want to be a little patchier and more green. Now this exact step, this one's purely optional. Uh, here I've got Pallid Witch Flesh. You can even use White Scar if you wanted to. What I'm going to do is pick out just a few of the larger Gross Boy spots. Uh, I'm not going to do this for all of them, but I want to make them a little lighter so that they're going to stand out when we do the next horrendous <laughs> gross detail. And then I'm going to turn to Iandan Yellow. Now I'm using this instead of something like uh, Imperial Fist because I specifically want that little orangey tint that it's got around the edges. Uh, oh, yuck. And yeah, I'm going to paint over the, the buboos with this stuff. And then again, purely optional, back to Pallid Witch Flesh. You can make little roundel shapes in the bottom of these. And yeah, that's, that's properly grim. That looks disgusting. Now I think by lightening them up with that Pallid Witch Flesh, you get a more virulent, pustulant sort of look. Uh, but, as always, this is up to you. Let's get on to his guts. And for this, I'm going to start with Pink Horror. And this is not terribly complex. We're just going to paint in all of the exposed, rubbery, flobbery bits. Spilling out of... Oh, Gordon Bennett, yuck. And then, in we go with some Flesh Terrors Red. We're going to make this properly gross and meaty. And as well, these smaller patches of torn flesh that don't have anything sort of sticking out of them, you can still jam a little bit of flayed one, uh, flayed one flesh, goodness me, flesh tear is red, and we go to make these look a little ripped up. Now at this stage, that's really the skin done. 
What I'm going to do now is to pop on all the other details. Now, most recently, the Dark Tide Scabs video I did, that's going to be where most of this sort of method comes from. I've painted grimy uniforms a dozen times before, so you're not missing out if I skip over this bit. Let's come back in a second once we've got some context on this fella. Now that is a little bit draw the rest of the owl, I know, but the point here is really more about how the skin has been painted, and with that context, I think that really sells the look. The last thing that I have done, which I did do off screen, was to pop a little bit of Targo Raid Shade into his eye sockets, and just around areas that I wanted to look a little bruised, and I haven't done much of it. Uh, I think if you were to thin that out, you might have a more subtle look, but I had a bit of fun playing with a new shade that I haven't really experimented with. What I'm going to do now is hit them all over with a matte varnish, and then I'm going to pop a little bit of gloss onto the horrid wet meaty bits. <laughs> we'll come back and have a look at what he looks like when his base is on, and he's all finished. All right, because I'm me, I was just about to varnish his guts, make them proper grimy, and then it hit me. I've got one more thing where I can experiment. So if this goes wrong, you'll know where and when, and I'd have at least got evidence of him looking cool before that happened. So I've got in my little pottle here, this is Ard Coat, any gloss varnish will do, and I am going to mix in some Plague Bearer Flesh, and, uh, oh dear, I don't know, something interesting might happen here. And once that's mixed in, let's grab a little bit of this mixture, and just paint it around the bottom, Sort of oozing out of so ah oh, yuck yeah no that's what I want uh, <laughs> oozing out of these little areas where he is wounded yeah that's grim that's awful uh, you could probably just use what is it Nurgle's rot that technical paint if you've got that but I don't got that so we experiment and there at last our infected Ogryn is complete. Now, the important thing to take away from this is that it's worth playing around, experimenting, and having some fun just making up a mix to see what kind of colors you'll get behind. Like I mentioned right at the start, your ratios of flesh color to whatever you're using doesn't really matter too much. You're looking for the texture that you can get from sort of stippling on your highlights, and ew, ew, what a lot of fun this really was to paint. So as always, thank you very much to Exit23 Games for the light and sound equipment necessary to get this vile get on the camera, as well as all of my wonderful patrons for keeping me ticking in paints and glue, including my producers Alan Nuttall, Kyrie Crawford, Andrew, Rod, and Jimmy. Your support lets me keep buying resin. Any questions or anything, feel free to drop them in the old comment box below. My Twitter and Instagram are both linked there too. So thank you very much for your time one and all, and you all enjoy the rest of your day.